Earlier this month, multiple news outlets reported this story. Dozens of girls collapse at Colombian school after playing with Ouija boards. The New York Post reported and said, there were 28 possible cases of anxiety in school students, said Hugo Torres, head of the Galeras Educational Institute in Galeras, where the incident took place, per Jam Press. According to the outlets, alarm bells went off after the girls reportedly suffered signs of fainting, anxiety, and other symptoms at school. They were subsequently admitted to a municipal hospital accompanied by parents and school faculty. The article goes on further to say, I work here in a hospital kiosk and every day I see three or four children arrive after fainting, exclaimed one mother. Parents, you have to move. Investigate what's happening at school because our children cannot continue in this situation. She added, our children always have a good breakfast and it cannot be said that what's happening is due to lack of food. Now, you may or may not be surprised to learn that this isn't the first time something like this has happened. This isn't the first time that young people who have been playing with these demonic games have experienced some type of physical symptom. In November 2022, The Independent reported that a group of teenagers collapsed after using a Ouija board at a school in Colombia, with five taken to hospital, according to reports. Teachers at the Agricultural Technical Institute in Hato are said to have found 11 students, aged 13 to 17, passed out in a corridor. The teenagers were suffering from violent vomiting, abdominal pain, and muscle spasms. While most were treated at a health center nearby, five were taken to the Manuela Beltran Hospital. After receiving treatment, doctors said in medical reports that the teenagers suffered from food poisoning. The mayor of Hato said the children were passed out. At the time they were found, they were short of breath and thick drool was coming out of their mouths. It is not ruled out that it was the Ouija board that is part of the investigation. Now this news received mixed reactions online. Some mocked these children and questioned if they had even seen a horror movie. Others dismissed it altogether as though it's superstition. But here's what I would like to explain to you. When you read the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, there are a few things that become abundantly clear. There is a spiritual world and it is real. God is real. Jesus Christ is real and he is alive. And so is the devil. Angels are real and so are demons. Heaven is real and so is hell. And throughout time, the devil has used one tool time and time again. The devil's most successful tactic is deception. And here's what deception is. Deception is the act of causing someone to accept as true or valid what is false or invalid. Now, in today's society, if you talk about demons, people don't think that they're real. Yet Jesus cast out many demons. In today's world, if you talk about hell, people will dismiss you and treat you as though you're not all there in the head. But Jesus preached about hell more so than anyone else. And so when we encounter stories like this, where young people are playing with Ouija boards and experiencing negative physical effects, we have to know that the devil has deceived many people to believe that he has no power. Now, don't get me wrong. The devil is a powerful enemy, but he is not all powerful. But despite that, the devil in this day and age has managed to convince people that there's no problem when it comes to entertaining demonic activity or entertainment. The Bible tells us to give no room to the devil, meaning that we need to close and lock every spiritual gateway into our lives that the enemy could potentially enter through. Matthew 6 verse 23 says, But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Our eyes are a gate. Our ears are a gate. Even the atmosphere we allow ourselves to enter can be a gateway. And I say this because what we allow through any of these three gateways can be influenced by either the Holy Spirit or by evil and demonic spirits. 
So how can we ensure that our lives are protected? How can we ensure that they are fortresses filled by the Holy Spirit as opposed to being dwelling places for evil spirits? Well, one of the most effective ways to guard ourselves against negative influences and evil spirits is by guarding ourselves against the type of entertainment we consume. What are you listening to? What are you watching? Where are you even spending your time? All kinds of entertainment is accessible to us more than ever. This is both a blessing and a curse. It's a door for both God and the devil. It's a gateway for both the godly and ungodly. But here's the thing. We choose who we let in. We choose what to watch, whether good or bad. We choose what to listen to, whether godly or ungodly. We choose the places we enter. Remember that the Bible says, my people perish because of a lack of knowledge, meaning that some of God's people are destroyed simply because they don't know. They don't know what kind of spirit they are letting in when they watch that horror movie. They don't know what they are inviting when they watch pornography. Do not be in that group of people who perish because of a lack of knowledge. What you don't know when it comes to the spiritual world can be used against you. A lack of knowledge means you will give the enemy an inch and he will take a mile. A lack of knowledge that means the enemy will present himself up as something innocent and harmless. He will deceive and make you think, there couldn't possibly be anything wrong with watching this. There's nothing wrong with listening to this type of music. Beware of the gate you are opening, people of God. Be vigilant about what you're inviting into your life. Open the door to the Word of God, the Word that can provide keys to all your problems. Open the door to Jesus Christ. Soldiers in the army of God, this is not the time to stand down. It's time to stand up. Stand up for Jesus. Stand up for Jesus in a world that is lost. Stand up and lift high his royal banner. You are an ambassador of the Most High. Stand up to the lies of the enemy. Stand up with the truth of the gospel. Stand up with the strength of the Holy Spirit. Stand up in God's strength. Stand up and pray. Stand up against doubt because some of us constantly have to deal with the voice of failure. A voice that whispers and reminds us of those moments, those missed opportunities, those unfortunate events, those past sins. But listen, we're going to need to come to a conclusion that our past mistakes, our past mishaps don't define you, but we struggle with that truth. Your identity comes from God and Jesus Christ. So embrace your identity as a child of God. It's time for the church, which is the baptized believer, to stand and stand tall and strong in this hour. It's time for the body of Christ to stand for holiness, a clean life and way of living according to the way of God. Stand and stand for what the word of God says for you and about you and begin to live like. In order to stand, you must have a firm foundation. In order to have a firm foundation, you must know the word of God for yourself and what it says about you. When you take a stand for Jesus, it means you must go to the foot of the cross. If you go there often, you will not be the same, for it will strengthen you to take a stand for Jesus.